So I'd like to open this up to our audience. We've had presentations about Scotland, Wales, and then and, then and now from Leeds. Is there anyone would like to start us off? Maybe I can start by, by asking Simon. Simon, you mentioned a couple of times the need for clinical leadership, and we heard from Andrew Goddard and others and Richard Murray earlier about the, the pressure on the clinical teams, particularly with the backlog. Are you worried that it will be hard to get that clinical leadership, not because people aren't interested, but just people are so backs to the wall with the numbers of patients coming in? Yeah, um, I think it is certainly one of our, our, our main risks for the programme just now. Um, I think it's something that we have to tackle uh, on a number of different fronts in terms of, uh, I touched on earlier as well, around making the benefits case fairly strong for the, for the programme. Um, we can't shy away from the fact that where we are in terms of kind of COVID recovery, um, we have to deal with it. Uh, and I think that's something that, you know, we will factor into some of our, our engagement activities as we start to kind of go on. But, uh, you know, getting the CMO's help um, to kind of address some of that is, is the, the good thing for us. Um, I appreciate that's maybe not the case, not, has not been the case in other programmes that, that we've delivered. Um, but I think that's certainly going to be something we're looking at going forward and, and getting that buy-in from that area um, is, is going to be key for us going as we move forward. Andrew, you mentioned also the Chief Medical Officer in, in Wales being involved. So that's kind of clinical leadership right at the top of the office. Do you feel scan for safety is something that's, that's penetrating to the top of, um, of, of government health? in kind of the, the, an awareness of it, of the, of the impact and the benefits for healthcare in Wales? I think it's definitely there within the agenda, um, but I, I, I hopefully you articulated it, it's there amongst a whole host of, of other initiatives that, that are underway, and I think it's making sure that the, 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 the interoperability and the, the, the fact that they all, all work together. So one of the early comments we had from um, one of the, the local clinicians was, are you going to be supplying gun belts for all the different types of scanners and things that we'll have have to carry around? And and it's it's that reassurance that just a minute, this will all be interoperable. Um, that it you know, collect once, use many times, that that kind of thing. So I think I think the whilst Chris Jones and Frank Atherton have been, have been brilliant, I think that that communication is so important, making sure the right messaging flows all the way down. Um, but it's almost been easier with Welsh Government than it has with, with local teams because of all of the other pressures that they've got underway and um, it's quite easy to see that the horizon and the bigger picture um, that you have to get over the, the current pressures and the, 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 the setup at the minute that's, that's probably the, the biggest current challenge. Steve, when I, when I was chair of the GMC I used to go regularly to, to Cardiff, uh, Edinburgh and Belfast and very struck how what you described, how close health was to government, the short kind of line of command, you could get in to see people, which England's a bigger country. I mean, for you in Leeds, do you feel much more detached from, from the English government and Westminster, or do you feel that's not a problem? You're running, what you're doing is, is for Yorkshire, and it doesn't really matter that you're not having that close connection with the government in Westminster. Yeah, I mean, I think that's absolutely right. Uh, and certainly sort of in, in my world, I don't have sort of particular connections with, with the, the, the wider government piece. We've, we've got good, st strong connections with local government and particularly the, the, the council uh, and other health, uh, health and social care sort of agencies in Leeds um, and particularly uh, strong links with the other health uh, agencies uh, across Leeds. So Leeds Community Health, for example, Leeds New York Partnership Trust. But we don't have the same uh, sort of access and, and, and two-way communication that I'm hearing from uh, fr from uh, colleagues from devolved nations that, that uh, in England. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience from your experience where you are? I guess you're wondering why Steve is Mr. Stephen Bush and not Dr. Stephen Bush. Um, I'm guessing he's a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons. It's a funny thing that you qualify as a doctor, get this title doctor, and you spend the rest of your career trying to be called Mr. again, but that's why he's Mr. <laughs> Bush rather than Dr. Bush. Um, I mean, Steve, Leeds have been doing this, we said, a long time. For somebody who is about to start embarking now, we were talking about the curve yesterday, you have the, the leaders, the people in the middle of the pack, 
and the, the people coming later. What kind of advice would you give to somebody trying to, to set up Scam for Safety locally now? What, what, what would be your advice to them? Yeah, and it's, a, it's a great question. Thank you. I, I suppose my uh, advice is, is to have that really hard look at, in the mirror and at each other about what's achievable, what the real focus of the approach is, what can be done in the time and the resources that we have available. Um, certainly, we, we, you, there's, a limp, there's a very much a finite resource. And you know, we, there's, a, there's, there's a crossover. My world is, is Scan for Safety, but it's also in the corporate ops team. And the corporate ops team were very focused on what tangible outcome outputs are we getting from the Scan for Safety program that you know, we can see, we can present to board, that we can demonstrate is benefiting our patients. Uh, and that's that bit of reducing the sort of uh, numbers of work streams from, from 14 down to three. Uh, and I would say, so I suppose my take home message is start small and then if you have capacity, get it bigger, but go for the big bangs that will really benefit patients. And Andrew Simon, do you have advice you'd give people starting up in, in uh, other, I mean, it's obviously it's running in Wales and Scotland, in the parts of England that are behind, what, what would be your advice to someone starting this afresh? I, th I think mine would, would, would be you have to start. If, if you try to design something that's going to be all encompassing, you'll, you'll never get there. And we, we faced a lot of criticism around um, just going for it rather than, you know, the planning every nth degree. So it, I think from, from where we are, my response at the time was inventory management is my back, we're going to do it. Um, the interoperability, the, the standards will come through, but we, we've got to start somewhere. We've got to start to get this, these digital signals into the system and middle of a pandemic, just approaching an, an election in Wales where the minister changed. We, we, it, you're never going to get an ideal time in health. I think you, you just, you've got to start. Um, and and I, I think what, what's been shown from the Scan for Safety programme leads and, and across England is it, it builds. It, it's the snowball ro rolling down the hill because it, you, 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 you can then take the evidence, you can show the benefits, that then makes the next bit easier and the next bit easier and, and it grows. And um, the stuff that, that Rachel articulated yesterday that they're doing in, in Hull now, we would never have got that in our business case because it, it just would have been too big, too many people, you know, we wouldn't have got off the starting blocks. I think that's good advice. Uh, the previous medical director for England had a phrase, don't eat the elephant whole, or Nelson mm. Mandela said every marathon starts with a step. If you try and envisage the whole thing at the get-go, you just would never get going. You know. Simon? Yeah, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. I think the thing for, certainly from a Scotland perspective, we get virtually handed a business case that had a lot of information already there. And, and one of the things that I certainly took out of it was about listening to, to other areas that have already started on the journey. So for me, there was a, a huge thing around lessons learned and something that's actually going to be on our first agenda for the programme board to say, we've engaged with other areas who've started on this journey uh, to learn what they've, you know, that very question about what would you do differently? What, would you, what did you learn from? What pitfalls do you avoid? And I think there is something there. If it was a new organisation that was just starting on this journey, the first thing, one of the first things I would be saying was go and talk to the people that have done it before, go and learn from them, understand what lessons they would, they would actually, they would tell you to avoid going forward. And uh, I think that's a critical thing. So the business case that we got had a lot of that in it. It had a lot of the, these are the areas that are kind of, you know, pushing forward in some of these, um, these initiatives. And it's been absolutely critical for us. It's been absolutely great kind of having that. Any questions or comments from anybody who's heard these three? One there, there's a roving microphone coming, thank you. Hi there, it's uh, Adam Watson from New Technology. Um, one of the challenges that came up a few times yesterday, particularly from Trust in England, was around supplier compliance, getting the right barcodes on products to enable scanning at the point of care. So really for Andrew and Simon, do you feel like approaching it from a national level with national infrastructure already in place in terms of distribution and purchase to pay, is that going to mitigate that challenge or is it still something that will be significant as you try and roll out? Can I go first? Can yeah, I, yeah. I, think, I think from a Scottish point of view, partially, um, we do have a lot of national contra contracts in place across Scotland, uh, which does help us. But likewise, we also have a lot of the, you know, I said earlier, Scotland is made up of 14 territorial boards um, and also eight special boards. They also have went out and have, have put in place a number of contracts as well. So it's not a, 
it, it's not a very clean picture. Um, so it does help us in some respects. And I think we will make some good headway in terms of engaging nationally with a lot of the suppliers. And uh, Frankie, Frankie Wallace is going to be leading on that for us. Um, but I think, yes, we will have to engage locally to understand with the local procurement teams about what contracts they have in place and how do they actually are they engaging with other suppliers that perhaps aren't on national contracts and how do we get them round the table to, to understand what needs to be done going forward. So uh, I think we've got a bit of a step up, but it's not a complete picture. It's not a, a one size fits all. I think from, uh, from the sit up in Wales, as I said, everybody who buys stuff works for us. So we've mandated our staff to, to collect G-tins. Um, if the Barnet formula is correct, I think we're 6% of the NHS. Um, so I don't think we're big enough to to really force it home with, with the supply base. I think it has to be a, a UK United um, push for that. Um, I could still carry on applauding the call for mandation from yesterday. Um, I, I think this, I don't think it should be optional. I, I think all the benefits are there. We, we've, we've seen it everyday lives, you know, guaranteed one of my kids will come into the room to tell me that, 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 um, that the printer's not working couple of minutes after I get an email from Amazon asking if I'd like to buy some ink. <laughs> they know that much about us in, in something that's meaningless. Why don't we know stuff about things that really mean a lot? And, and I, I would be hugely supportive of any mandation. And I, and I think industry, a lot of them have already stepped up and have already a lot, put a lot of effort and a lot of expense into this. Um, and what we don't want, because I think it was talked about yesterday, we don't want that focus to be dropped because if, it, if they've not getting the returns on it, in the current climate, they'll stop investing in it, and that will be disastrous for all of us. Steve? Um, I, 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 it's difficult to sort of add to, to uh, uh, my colleagues' sort of uh, um, answers, really. Um, I'll, I'll pause that one and just pass it on, if I may. Um, Andrew, you have a background in, in devices. One of the things uh, I said I've been interested in procurement for a while, or the fact the NHS seems to procure, for example, lots of scalpels and gloves from lots of providers, um, each trust buying its own kit. And I remember being involved in a round table with the head of Marks and Spencers who said, you don't think we let every shop decide what, what clothes and what shoes well, we procure at scale, and that's an economy. Um, is Scam for Safety helping in Wales, helping rationalise your purchase and procurement of kit and driving the cost down? I'd say we're not, not there yet. The extent of its rollout is, isn't, isn't as extensive as, as we want at the minute. Um, one of my secrets within dealing with consultants over the years is whatever ideas I've got, discuss with them, try and persuade them that it's their idea, congratulate them on it, and then help them deliver it. And I think that's what Scam for Safety is. We're putting the information in front of the people that can make the decisions. I'm proud of being involved with the National Joint Registry in Orthopaedics since, since it's, it started. I think I'm the longest server on it. And I think that that, whilst was resisted at the beginning around whether it was becoming a, a league table and, and lots of consultants were, were sceptical of it, now provides them with the information to allow them to change their own practice. So they don't have to be told whether they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing, they get it played back to them so they can go, just a minute, I need to make some tweaks here. And I think scan for safety to a lesser degree, but that will start to show people how different they are, um, how, how efficient they are, and, and it's putting the information back in, 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 in front of the people who, who make the ultimate decision. One of the things we've heard before at these meetings from Keith Jones in, in Derby, a maxillofacial surgeon, he, he can't be here, he's got COVID, I think, but is that the, the clinicians, certainly in Derby like it, and Andrew Goddard, a gastroenterologist in Derby, that they, they, they like knowing about, uh, they find their practice in theatre is more efficient, works better. Um, what Steve mentioned, knowing where their patients are, throughput, they can construct league tables of why some people seem to take much longer doing an endoscopy and others and try and drill down on why that is. Uh, Simon, you were mentioning the need for clinical leadership. Are you clear that you're also feeding back to the clinicians across the, the eight territorial boards in Scotland that there are benefits for them in, in this coming into their practice? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mentioned earlier about the, the case around, or the benefits case for 
um, for, for the whole programme really, uh, in terms of kind of trying to define that to a level that we can have that narrative, we can build that collateral for the programme that actually when we go out and start to engage with a lot of clinical colleagues, that we can say very quickly, this is what the benefit is going to be and this is why, you know, and I love that idea of kind of making it think that it's their idea to kind of then get that buy-in and get that support. It's, it's, it's maybe an idea I'll steal kind of thing going forward as well. But uh, yeah, certainly f from our point of view, it's, it's more a case of kind of, we have the very high level benefits just now. We have that very set in terms of, you know, reducing kind of clinical time spent doing things like stock control. But I think talking to some colleagues last night as well around some of the kind of um, the benefits that they've actually realised in terms of the, the savings that they can actually put down on, on books and so on, that's actually a really powerful message. And that's something that I think in terms of, you know, from a clinical perspective, in terms of saying, you know, making the, the, the information there readily available to say this, these kits that you opened three of at one point, you're now opening one of them because mm. you understand that actually the cost of one of them is £40 every time you open it, don't open the three of them just now, just open the one. If you need the other two, then open them at that point. That's the kind of messages that I think, you know, would resonate, I think, more with as, as you start to kind of talk about it a bit more, as you start to kind of make it a little bit more uh, transparent and, and more readily available. And I think using this kind of programme, that's what we'll get in terms of that information. So I think it's something that, you know, we can use going forward. So, yeah, looking forward to it. I think it's, it is going to be challenging, but I think that's certainly the, the, the attack on it. Steve? Yeah, just, just on that, that theme, which is really important about the, the engagement of, of our clinicians in the process. And um, the, I, I mentioned the Leeds Improvement Method, uh, part of the, the uh, Virginia Mason uh, uh, production system, but the, the concepts are really straightforward. And it's about giving your clinicians time outside of their, of their clinical work to focus on what the right thing to do is. And, 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 and Part of the process is having sort of specific times. We, we sometimes have an entire week, but you can do it in a day, you can do it in half a day, of, right, we're not going to do anything else. We are just going to focus on what's getting in the way of providing the, 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 the service that we want to do for our patients, the care for our patients, reducing waste. What, what's, we talk about rocks in the shoes. What's getting in the way of that? And giving clinicians, and I'm talking about the whole multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary team, Time and headspace is crucial. You can't do it at the end of an operating list. You can't do it at the end of a two clinic day. You've got to give a bit of protected time. We're gonna sort this out and then we've got an, a cohort of people who are giving up their time to do this. It works really well. Okay, any questions or comments from anybody? Okay. Well, I've got one last question. Um, you're all desperate for your, for your lunch, I can tell. Um, I've been hearing over the last two days quite a lot about mandating and GTINs and GLNs and GL, L, LS, GSLNs or things. I thought it was medicine was full of acronyms. I'm learning it, it, it inhabits this territory as well. So I was being told last night that the hospital I work in, our wristbands, which I think are GLSNs, are not standardized or, or don't meet what the standard, the, the GLSN standard. Could I invite the three of you to say something about uh, for me or for the rest, anyone else in this audience who doesn't live and breathe the, this word spaghetti of, of acronyms. Um, is it true there are lots of hospitals in the UK that are still using wristbands and product and equipment in place that aren't conforming with these, what I thought were, were well accepted global standards? Steve. Um, well, I, I know that we across Wyatt, we were, we've had to get to a journey. Wyatt is the Yorkshire? Yes, the West Yorkshire <laughs> Association of Acute Trusts. There you go, okay. that one, yeah. okay. okay. <laughs> Apologies, I think of some more TLAs in a minute. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so, so we, we've been on a, 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 during the program, we've got to a point where we are absolutely compliant, but by definition, you know, we've had to work really hard to get to that position. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure uh, across the, 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 the wider, organ the, the wider uh, uh, piece that there will be places that are still at some point on that journey. And a, and a wristband that had, say, my, my hospital still uses hospital number, I think eight digit hospital numbers. A wristband that had a hospital number, not my NHS number, that would not be compliant, is that right? That, that's my understanding, yeah. 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 You're with me. Andrew? <laughs> We've not got it in Wales. We've, we've, the, the, the patient administration systems that are used, Betsy Cadwell is the biggest health board across the top of North Wales where I live. I've got three different PAS systems for three different district hospitals, the, the district general hospitals that don't, uh, don't have the same, same codes. So part of the programme is um, with Digital Health and Care of Wales is to 
design the standards to make sure that from a Welsh perspective that they that we're in a position to do that. We, we have intra-hospital transfers mm. and they have to have a different wristband when they arrive in the new hospital. So it, we, we want to make it that, that the GSRN on the, on the patient wristband can be read anywhere by any of the scanners. Uh, and is PASS system, is that, an act, is that PAS? Uh, PAS. PAS patient, What's PAS stand for? Pa patient Administration System. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> uh, WPAS actually, because it's Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> Simon. So uh, Scotland, we use CHI numbers, uh, which is Community Health Index numbers. Um, and, and I think it, I'd love to be able to give you the guarantee that yes, we are, kinda, there, there's going to be no issues there. Um, I couldn't hand on heart say that. Just, I think it will still be a bit of a, as we start to get underneath it a little bit, it'll be a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, but I think you know, the messages coming out just now is that we should be okay on that front in terms of kinda, uh, not sh maybe not one of the biggest risks or problems for the programme, but hopefully, fingers crossed, that will remain the case going forward. Well, thank you all for your time. Maybe audience join with me in thanking you for wonderful talks and for our panel.